Hey everyone, this is sort of a continuation from the last video, which so it's, it's still the 13th of July. So as you saw in the last video, I just put the cauliflower out. So I'm just going to probably uh, harvest some cauliflower, have a clear up. Um, I've got some beans to pick, it's probably some blueberries, so there'll be a bit of harvesting and probably I brought some other beans with me to plant. Whether I get them out, I've not decided where I'm going to put them yet. Um, I might put some in the brassica bed, not the brassica bed, in the asparagus bed, sorry. So I don't know how well you saw the uh, bit of footage that I did on the, the new poles that I've bought. So I thought, well, uh, I've got some here, so I'll just show you a bit closer. So what I used to use bulk of the time, I still do, um, just some old bits of cane. You know, you just put down the corner of the bed and you put your plastic alkathene, your water mains pipe, 20 mil or 25 mil, 25 mil is a bit better. Um, and then other things I've used, these, when you buy them little like, um, little plastic greenhouses, um, you know, the, the cheaper ones, you get these poles, and the covers blow to bits and you get the poles left over. So they don't throw them away because they are handy, but they don't last long because obviously they get quite weak and they, they snap. You know, they just rust, you know, but it's still a usable pole and that you've bought them so that, you know, instead of throwing them away, you might as well put them to use. They'll give you a couple of years, something like that. You know, you could probably, you know, put some tape on them or something just to give them a bit more water resistant. So the other, what I've bought recently, if I can think, I'll put the, I'll put the link in the previous video anyway, but it'll be in this. I'll try and find the link to where I got these from. Uh, I think it was on Amazon. Um, they weren't dear. I think it was 50 in a box. I think you can get them in less amounts, but I use eight to a bed because I have four hoops. And uh, if you want to know how I make my hoops, I'll also put the link in the description below for how I actually make the netted hoop covers. Little tiny bit different than these ones here. It just has some more side canes on it because it's a it's a taller net for a narrower bed um, for Brussels sprouts. But the principle is the same. You know, um, it's just the whole hoop system, the same size net and everything. It's just uh, they're on a on a on a four foot wide bed. They're a bit higher. So I just to stop the um, the sides blowing in so much, I just put side canes on. So you know, I just use some of these. The idea is is try and get as much of that side straight. So if, you, if it's coming at an angle, it can curl over. And you think like a cabbage when it's growing, the leaves touch the side. And yes, something might lay eggs through the net. I've not really had it with butterflies, to be honest. I've never had caterpillars while I've used these nets. Um, so I've not had a problem with caterpillars on brassicas for whew, 10, 11 years, something like that. So, and I've used different, old, you know, alternative types of netting and coverings, but for the last what, eight years, something like that, I've pretty much used this sort of method um, that's in the video. You know, it's quick, it's easy, packs away, you move it around, provided all your beds are the same. You just push it in, you know, trying to keep a good good two foot you can use something called rebar which is solid these aren't solid um, they are plastic coated steel 11 mil you can get 8 mil but I didn't want the uh, the 8 mil because it might be a bit too bendy because it is very exposed here and the wind don't half clout the site same again it doesn't have to be perfect all it says to stop the thing from going out they're on the inside of the bed because when I do my neck covers I try and get it so it's tight to the outside of the bed that'll prevent a lot of things you know um getting up into it like snails snails can't seem to get in unless they're really small um, they can, sometimes you find them trying to slide in over the top of the net so they might find a little hole and be able to drop in but um i don't really have any problem with snails slugs yeah because you know probably some snails can burrow from underneath the side of the bed but it's it's not 100 percent proof but it's it, it sort of makes it hard work for them so less numbers less damage better for us I simply get your alcohol slide that over and slide that over you know these poles are probably about 2.9 meters long something like that you can make them a little bit longer because it's three meter netting that goes over because you obviously you want it to come over the side of your bed you know at least a good two three inches you know and I have a couple of pegs basically I have a peg at each end and two pegs down the side to try and get that net as tight as you can and then obviously uh, i put the, the crossbar across the top which helps brace these apart and when you buy your netting it has little eyelets on it that slot over the three meter does in the center anyway you can use two meter just make two meter poles you know same you know if you've only got like a 
a four foot bed, two metres, enough. You know, if you're just growing out of cabbages and cauliflowers, two metres tends to be enough. But for the Brussels sprouts and tall crops, you need to go for the three metre, for a two metre bed, you know. Um, so I can't do Brussels sprouts under these, really, because they will at the top, unless if I buy a real short variety. So that's that's all I'm, I'm sort of changing on these nets, is just going to using these metal poles now. Um, just to try them out. So I'm not affiliated with them, I had to pay for them myself, so there's no sort of advertising here, it's just an option. Some of you will find other things that work, and uh, great, you know, if it works, keep keep doing it. So, well, me, I've just spotted, I've not really checked any of this beetroot for, for a while, I've just spotted something that's quite big, so uh, I can't remember the variety, it was free, I think, these were, but... Uh, it looks like I've got some beetroot. I might as well try and twist out the bigger ones and uh, take them home and give them a whirl. Because these were sown oh, ages ago in little modules, in like little clusters. I don't like them too big because sometimes it can get woody. I do I do tend to grow bolt hardy. Um, so if I can sort of advise a variety to grow, yep, go with bolt hardy. It's kind of a bit fairly idiot proof really, bolt hardy. No, but I thought I'd try these because we're free seeds, so but give them a whirl. If I don't like them, won't grow them again. So uh, I'm gonna take too many home because only me who eats it. And I cannot find a really good pickling mix. I tend to uh, roast them, leave about an inch of stalk on, roast them for about three quarters of an hour to an hour in a tray with some water in, cover it with foil and then leave them to cool down, you can pop the skins off, the skins just pop off. Some people peel them, grate them, boil them and all that lot, but I just roast them, peel them off, vacuum pack them or put them in a zip seal bag and they'll last for a little while. But obviously if you've got a pickling mix, just follow your instructions online, there'll be stuff and just, just pickle them. You do the same with onions as well. You know, because it's all about growing things that you can eat now and also preserve. So, it's a bit of a bonus thing. I've got to take some spring onions as well, because rusties arrive, so... Spring onions. I'll get that other bunch after. I don't think I've got a label here. They're guardsmen. Like I said, beetroot, I'm not sure. If I can remember, I'll put it in the description below. All right, we'll get on with some cauliflower now. Okay, we're going to fish net up on this cauliflower now. And uh, I say I'll pick a few, there's a few slug holes in the leaves, so it's the thing with cauliflower, you, the slugs do like them. You know, and it's usually the real tiny ones that get up inside, you know, but uh, you know, when I put this net back down, I'm going to put some slug pellets under here as well. Because it's not nice, you know. Well, slug, slug infested, sometimes you, it gets that infested, you know, and it's, it's a bit of a mess. <coughs> and the, uh, missus isn't a fan, fan of it either, so she sees a slug. That's why I, I usually let her deal with the cauliflower. And uh, dissect it up. Obviously it's going to be cooked anyway, so it's part of gardening. You're going to get a few bugs. I'm just going to keep me out for the old uh, caterpillars. Well, butterflies, I should say, because I've seen a few cabbage whites knocking around. So, hopefully, I'll stay away. So I need to have a clear up, but obviously I'll do the clear up in a bit. I'm going to obviously take some plants out. You know, I was probably just leaving the plant in. Um, it's like this one here. That one. Is the one that I left in ages ago. Really stunted. It's blown anyway, you know. So if you ever get a cauliflower that's done that, it's just because it's it's, it's blown. It's going to go to seed. Um, trick is you don't. You better harvest them small. If you try and look at them, think oh a bit bigger, a bit bigger. Just takes a few days and then bang, it's separated. So I mean this one's a, a fairly decent tight head. So I'll just uh, knock that off underneath there. Not a massive head. But uh, 
it's still cauliflower, you know, so not bad. And you can see it's just starting to uh, open out around the sides here. Um, kind of look underneath, that's where you're likely to see the slugs. Um, can't see anything. Oh, yeah, see one there if I can. It's just dropped down. And we can see that. But that's what I mean, it's these really tiny slugs that cause a problem. Best thing to do with them is just dispatch them. You can't be all uh, sort of creature happy. Yeah, they have a role to play in the compost bin, not in my raised beds. They're quite welcome to it. Everything else except what I'm growing. There's plenty of stuff that gets grown, that gets put in there. They could be more than happy, but for some reason, it's just a gardener's nightmare. There's another one here. You know, it's got slump slug, slug damage on it, so instead of letting it sit there festering with more slug damage, it's going to harvest it. You know, because you can tell, first signs you'll see like there's a slug poo on it. And there they are. It's up right underneath. There and they're really tiny and it's these little tiny ones that actually put holes in your potatoes as well so uh, you've got a knife just a quick slice in half flick them on the ground the birds will have them you know because I haven't had any pellets in there so not as far as I'm aware anyway it was really hot before but uh, it's nice but the wind's a bit got a bit of a chill to it when you're grafting away and you start sweating and then you stop. You can't watch me knee because it's starting to ache a bit. Another red ear that's on the verge of blowing. Get that off. Cut some cauliflower off when I do it. So I'll just have a quick look underneath. Yep, little slug in there. Get them out because uh, you take them home in the head, they'll just carry on chomping away. Like a little, I don't know what that is, like a little grub of some sort. Sometimes you see some like little clear kind of grubs, transparent. Um, they are actually hoverfly. The more of them you can see, the better. I mean, he's a tiny slug and he's right up in there. Got him. Yeah, it's just one of them things with cauliflowers, there's all that nice and all that you can see, it's all the nice little crevices they can get up into and they're nice and protected under there, under a net, so nothing can really get at them. It's a shame because uh, you take your nets off to let the, obviously the birds and frogs and all sorts in, then you're exposed to caterpillars and butterflies, so it's uh, one of them things you just think, well, I'll take a few slug holes. Because um, if you get cabbage whites, land on there and lay eggs, it can absolutely decimate your crop. Usually I'd leave some of this foliage on, but like I said, I'm just checking for slugs. One dropped out there, I don't know where it went. Right there. So if you see any, get rid of them. They're just good. You can throw them over there, they'll just come back. I like they can smell it in the air. You know, sometimes you do see them right up inside and you just can't get at them. But, uh, not massive cauliflower heads, but I'm not prepared to, you know, I've got a few, a few going in. I've had some in the back garden that have been a bonus. Sort of crop. I mean, this has got loads of slug damage on it, this. Just, you just see by the slug poo, so. It'll be right in the middle there. There's not even a collie forming yet, but I'm hoping it'll bugger off. Obviously, when I clear it, I might find some under the leaves. But uh, so like this one, it's it's tiny, but I can't leave it because slugs will just have it. Slug there. 
absolutely tiny slugs. A tiny head, but I don't mind. I grow enough of them. And obviously, you know, everything's had a bit of a tough start. I can see one right up inside there, I know. have to leave him in. Come out of his own accord. If I turn him up that way, he should want to come out. You know, as long as you, you wash it properly and everything, and then it's cooked, should be fine. Another one over there I'll take out. <coughs> you know, it's a, it's a little cauliflower head, but still it's a crop. I think there's 24 in this bed originally. Fairly clean. Obviously, there's not so much damage on the foliage around here, which is a good sign. You know, I'd rather try and get rid of as many slugs as I can today to let these other ones heart up a bit, but they'll get slug damage. You know, when I need to sort of leave the bed for a little while once they're all harvested, not for long because I can't, I can't really leave it for that long to sort of give the slugs nothing to eat. So hopefully they'll bugger off somewhere. Um, like I say, it's the small ones, you know, you get one big slug, you can kill that big slug. Um, it's going to be less problem long term because it's one less to lay eggs. Right, so I'll just clear this bed now. I won't bother filming that. I'm just going to, uh, you can't cut and leave the roots in, but I'll try and twist and pull them out because the plants are going to be going in pretty much the same place. And I don't want to be trying to plant it and digging a trowel in tough roots. And then we'll, uh, we'll have a look back at it when it's done. Right, that's it all sort of uh, cleared out. I pulled the plants out that have had the heads taken off. Got rid of some of the uh, really yellow leaves um, and anything that's really, really holy that's on the outside because the plant will try and repair and you think, well, don't repair, I want the head now. So you don't want to stress it out. So you think, well, get rid of that leaf because it's just sapping the life out of it and just get that life into the head. Um, put some slug pellets down. I've actually put a few slug pellets down the outer leaves to try and fall down with the They'll get washed out by the rain eventually, but um, if there's any slugs there tonight, they might go down and eat them, and then that'll be the end of them, hopefully. But it's inevitable, there's going to be slug damage. And if you can't cope with that, um, don't, don't grow stuff that they like. You know, you can try all sorts of things, you know. Um, you know, copper, copper tape, copper tube. You know, different salts and things like that. Um, beer traps, they all work to a degree. But, you know, uh, there's plenty of slugs. And I don't ever think they'll be uh, on the endangered list. Anytime soon, anyway. That's it. It's just one things, if you can't deal with it, then just grow some that they don't really cause too much problem on like onions, but they still eat some of the stems on onions, you know. If they're out of food, you'd be surprised what they'll eat. I just wish they'd eat more weeds. They say they have a good role in a compost heap. But they also breed in compost heaps. You know, it's tricky ideally you wouldn't compost, you know, too close to your your raised beds, but um it's an allotment, it's part of being able to compost and make your own sort of mulch top, you know, to feed up for the next sort of crop that's gonna follow it. That net's all back down for now. I say I'll uh, I'll sturdy that up with the new new poles. When all them are done, I don't know how many left now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 15 left. I need them out, really, within uh, two weeks max. Because the other ones are going to get pot bound. And then I'll end up with small plants, small cauliflower. Um, they're not going to get full size anyway, I think, because they have dried out a few times. I've brought them down onto the patio now. It's a bit shaded, but like I say, I've got these seven 
in here. I've had some out in the back garden, so I've had cauliflower this year. I've got probably four, five bags in the freezer of the stuff I've, I've grown already that's blanched. You know, I've got whatever heads up just pulled from here. You know, there's them. Um, so um, it's time to get on with picking some beans now. There's some beans to pick and some blueberries, so I'll get on with that and have another quick look through my peas. There's not so many peas left, to be honest. I mean, if I wasn't going to put any more in, I'd leave them to, to dry up and um, take them for seed. So if you ever get any pods that have gone over, don't worry about it. Just dry them for seed. They'll do for the next year's seed. Right, we'll crack on. All right, as you can see, I've put some uh, sort of a uh, construction up of some canes. Um, so this was the asparagus bed originally. So these ones here, Tenton, there's one that come, kind of comes back. This was a, a, a purple asparagus. So I thought, you know what, stuff it, I'll use the space. So put these canes up, I'll just put like a bit of a central spot. I didn't want to take this frame down, I thought I'll leave it be for now. And hopefully the beans will find their way through. Um, I think they're called Tender Star. They're a bit of a cross between a, a, a runner bean and a, a climbing French bean. Um, well, pretty much a runner bean, to be honest. I grew them last year. They did really well last year at home. So usually beans struggle a bit up here. Um, so we'll see how they fare. And if they do OK, then it's something I can grow up here. Something else I can grow up here. Whether Because this bed might end up becoming a bean bed. Because I intend on probably taking my asparagus out this year. Whether I take it home or get rid of it altogether, I don't know. I might keep some of the crowns and, and put them somewhere at home in a small bed. Because um, that side tends to be, most of them seem to be sort of appearing on that side. And I've got probably two on this side down there. Um, so like I say, we just play that one by ear. They might end up getting moved into these new beds that I do yet, I don't know. So um, they're about sort of seven, eight inch apart. It was all guesswork, just use like this, this sort of quarter area. So there's nine in all together. Eight foot canes. Um, just brace them together at the top and at the middle here, some canes across there. I'll just put some bits of jute twine running across. So because they're very vertical, um, I don't want them to just keep sliding down. So I think as they go through these, hopefully, um, the leaves will sort of hang on these, which will help keep them upright. What they're going to be like harvesting wise, I don't know. They might be a bit of a nightmare to get at that side. I don't know. Um, I can reach at the moment, but obviously once the asparagus grows and you get these big ferns on, I don't know. So I might have to kind of like be poking through and reaching through. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I've got nine in here. I've got quite a few left over, so I might put some at home as well, if I can find the space. Um, but anyway, we'll have a quick look at what I've managed to crop today. Uh, I've still got a little bit of work to do, whether I do it tonight or not, I don't know, because a few hours have passed, I've been way late doing other bits and bobs and that, so um, um, I might just get this stuff back over to the van and then call it a, you know, a day for today and then come back in a few days to pick a few more peas. I need to clean that small brassica bed up. Um, I've taken a couple of cabbages, so we'll have a look at them. So uh, I'll get the camera and we'll have a look. Right, so these are the cauliflower, these are Clapton. Nothing, you know, magnificent about them. They're very small, um, but after all the trouble I've had, I've managed to get a crop from them. And there's still 15 more in there to go. These are the uh, Primo 2 Golden Acre Cabbages. Um, got two of them, not really rock hard hearts, but I need to start taking them. A bit of cabbage to use up as well. Spring onions, uh, a few runner beans. Not runner beans, the Cobra French climbing beans. A little punnet of some blueberries in the back there, you know. So, not as many berries, but they're just starting to come ripe now. So, I'll get a few, and then of course, the uh, the beetroot. So, uh, I'll try and remember if I can find the seed packet, try and pop them in the description. No idea what they're like, I've never had these ones before. Um, so, we'll see how they are. So, that's all the uh, you know, the um, the harvest for today. So, it's it's nice to be getting stuff again. Oh, I've got a bit of a problem on the uh, cobra climbing beans here. They're getting uh, a lot of white fly. And I think uh, when they get really sort of sticky and, and start getting black, it's like a, I think it's called like sooty black mold. And it's it's because it's they're absolutely covered in white fly. So, um, you know, and loads of eggs underneath all these little dots there, they're all eggs. So I'm going to spray them. Um, well, for this time of night, a lot of other things will be out of the way. So, um, can't see any ladybirds or anything on there. Not seen any ladybird, ladybirds on here, to be honest. Um, actually doing anything. 
So I'm going to spray them because um, it can cause a lot of problems. That I did have it last year on my tomato plants, and it uh, it was a white fly. So I don't know how you can see, but if I get this leaf here, turn it carefully. There, full of white fly. You shake that about, just come off, full of white fly. So, um, yeah, no option. I'm going to spray them, and it's also in the uh, in the fruit cage on them as well. If I kick them about, all the underneath of them are uh, covered in white fly. So I'll give them a spray and uh, see how they go. But my bushes are all looking okay in there. So I've still to pick some peas. I don't think there's that many. I mean, that's ripe and that's right. But there's a few, that, I mean, there's a couple here that aren't. So I'll give it a couple more days because these need to fatten up a little bit. And then I'll, I'll strip the lot off then. Um, so I've taken the uh, two cabbages from here. So I've got them four left. I need to clean out some of that foliage under that dead foliage. Because some of them are growing a bit funny actually. They're actually not forming a heart. They're just kind of growing distorted in the middle a little bit. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Because I bet there's a lot of white fly under them as well. But we'll just see how that goes. And of course like where I took my spuds out. There is actually a big mound all the way along there of the compost. Put about 12 barrelfuls down there, something like that. Just somewhere to store it. And as I dig out my jazzies next, which are here, then it'll be Charlotte's and, and then the Maris Piers. You know, because there's some yellow foliage going on. Um, don't know how you can see from this angle. So the light's starting to fade because it's, uh, it's getting on a bit. I've been here most of the day. So you can see there's some of the foliage, it's not blight or anything, it's just it's just dieback, you know, I think they're, they're just paling off. Because they had the second earlys, you know, paling off a little bit sooner than I would have thought, but uh, I think they're just kind of coming sort of ready. So another two or three weeks, um, they'll be done, you know what I mean? Um, whatever it was, 20th of April, so it's working out how many weeks, probably, I don't know, 14 weeks. You know, in, in a few weeks, they'll be done. And then there's the... Um, Sarpol Mira and the Orla over there, which will need a little bit longer. That's why they're still pretty sturdy and standing. There's a bit of a dodgy looking one down there. It's a late coming, it's a bit twisted. I don't know if it's got that black leg or not, I don't know. A few bits of weeds I keep seeing poking up through, so I'll pull them out. So I'll, I'll come down in a few days and I'll have a bit of a clear up and actually walk through these carefully and try and clear the mounds a little bit, just to prevent slug damage, I guess. Um, because uh, we're going to have a hot spell, so slugs won't really like that. Right, on that note, that's the end of this video. Um, I was going to put some stuff in the garden on it, but uh, I'll leave that, I'll do that in the next video. Um, try and keep this one a little bit shorter. Um, so it's just a general update of the garden, how things are going and uh, how seedlings are doing, um, which I'll upload that probably in a few days' time. I'll, I'll probably film it tomorrow. So thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.